So welcome to the Fast Food and Cafe Virtual Expo. Uh, we are here with yet another interesting session. Uh, uh, senior members from the industry getting together to give their perspectives on the trust barometer and how to rebuild customer trust. Um, so let me introduce you quickly to the panelists. Uh, we have Arvind RP, who's Director of Marketing Communications from McDonald's India. Uh, Gaurav Narang, the founder of Coffee Culture. Uh, we have Mohit Khattar, a CEO of Baskin Robbins. Ramchandar Raman, President of FNB Coffee Day Global. Uh, Raghunath, the owner of Satkriti Satvik. And moderating the session today is Sridhar Prasad, who's an internet business expert and independent consultant, uh, having a lot of experience in KPMG and Kalari Capital before this. So without taking any more time, let me hand over to Sridhar. Over to you, Sridhar, to take this uh, interesting discussion forward. Thanks, Mini, and uh, welcome all. One more interesting topic, which people all are, are wondering, what is the right uh, secret sauce to get our customers back? And an interesting bunch of panelists today, I mean, I'm just looking at all of your profiles. Most brands, which uh, maybe at, at a youth stage, we would have lived up. And now we take our children, trusted brands and uh, brands which have, had, have garnered a widespread geographical footprint as well. And that's the representation of our uh, speakers for today's session. And the organizers, as we have seen, as, as used this terminology, trust barometer. Now, what we intend to talk today and uh, hear the experts is the various dimensions of trust in today's world, right? All know a lot of things have happened, whatever be the trigger, but, uh, but consumer behavior has obviously changed. Preferences have changed. The word consumer itself has changed. Um, today's consumer, yesterday's consumer, are they the same? So with that, I would, I would like to bring in the first uh, thread for our conversation, which I've been thinking about on the trust itself from a perspective of the concept, which all of us represent in the industry. The concept is that consumers, for whatever reason, would like to come out and eat a cook, eat a food which is cooked by someone else, served by someone else. The reason could be an experience, reason could be a meeting, reason could be a social gathering, reason could be taking children out, whatever the reason be. That was the world before. Now, how do we build trust back to that concept itself to start that Hey guys, life is, is whatever it is. Come back and, and uh, trust the earlier medium of giving you uh, a social satisfaction of dining out, meeting people. Many of your, your restaurants and your chains would have seen various kinds of customer use cases coming in. How do we build back trust to that concept that dine out is a part of our social professional life and, and bring that back to our minds from the way we all are currently connected. I mean, we are on a a digital platform connected to each other to the earlier platforms which we were all used to. With that, let me try to uh, let me let me bring in uh, Mohit. Mohit, uh, being a veteran in the industry, one of the largest uh, dessert brands in the country, with, with all options of servicing customers. Mohit, how do you see this uh, possibility of bringing back trust in the concept itself? Okay, so Sridhar, uh, first of all, uh, you know, I, I really like the way you put things in perspective and uh, I, I love your definition uh, pretty much, you know, in the way you kind of articulated the entire proposition. Uh, uh, now, uh, if I have to kind of dwell on this topic, uh, you know, in a, in a context where the entire world has kind of turned upside down, and, you know, for consumers, everything has changed. Uh, I mean, I'm not going into the pain points, et cetera, et cetera. But fact of the matter is that uh, everything stands shaken right now. And in this context, uh, you know, there are brands uh, which have stood for something over the last 70 years, 100 years, uh, et cetera. Uh, so does it remain the same in the minds of the consumer or do things change? And, and that's the million dollar question. As brands, therefore, what should our stance be? Should our stance be that, you know, oh, everything remains the same. We've stood for 100 years and therefore we should do the same things or should we start doing things differently? And I think the answer is very obvious that in a, in a context where everything has changed so dramatically, we cannot rest on the laurels of what the brand did 100 years ago or 70 years ago. We have to reinvent ourselves in the minds of the consumer as he stands today. Or, or as she stands today, whichever way you want to articulate your consumer. Uh, so trust per se is not going to be a function of what you did. Yes, it'll have a bearing, but it'll not be only 
uh, reliant on what happened hundred years ago. It will also depend on what are all the things that you do today. In this context, trust has to be a function not just of the product and the way it is manufactured or the way it is brought into the outlet. It's also a function of how you reach out to your consumer. It's also a function of what your processes are within the uh, within the restaurant or within the cafe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's a way. Uh, it's also a function of how you service the customer, whether the customer is a dine-in customer, whether the customer is an online customer. Because, uh, as you very rightly said, the definition of a customer is suddenly now all-encompassing. You know, it's not just dine-in customers; it's also online customers. And they could have been your dine-in customers earlier, and they may again be your dine-in customers maybe a few months down the road. But you you cannot ignore that segment, and therefore your proposition has to extend to them as well. And as I said, your processes, uh, also how your people are interacting with your customers, both online and offline. So uh, in that sense, uh, how are you reaching out to your customers? What are you engaging? Uh, you know, how are you engaging with them? What are you engaging with them on? And so on and so forth. So it's 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 pretty much uh, you know uh, an all sum game rather than just doing one thing that is going to build trust. Interesting. You yes. you almost summarized everything what we should speak today at level one. <laughs> Thanks for that because I was going to spend a lot of time on engagement as well because that's that's anyways critical. Possibly, possibly we can get on to you know discussing the threads. Well, absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, I'm sure uh, everybody yeah. will have a point yeah. of view on. With that, let me let me bring in Ram, uh, possibly the largest of. the brands where i mean we know what all the brands stood for coffee day and and uh, let me bring in uh, ram here and ask the question a slightly uh with the number of outlets you have and mohit has and many others have how do we as practitioners communicate uh trust in today's world forget the brand coffee day brand uh, uh, brand uh, baskin robbins and others for the time being but as practitioners how can we communicate Uh, trust for the new consumer as in not communicate in little communication manner but what is it that we can do to build back trust in our own business is what i'm trying to say uh so um see um you know from the time uh, from march to now we have uh, we have also trying to figure out what what needs to be done and uh, it, while there is no definitive answer we are still a lot of people are trying to you know just like us trying to uh, um throw darts in the dark room um while i agree with a lot of things mohit said i think uh i i we have a slightly different view i think uh, while it has shaken up and all that but i think i the way we look at it from what we have seen happening is as if there is a big freeze has happened you know the industry among everything from all other industries retail industry had evolved to a point where things were opening left and right everybody was scaling up i mean we were scaling up at incredible numbers and suddenly this thing happened and suddenly we find uh, people are not going in i mean that is a fundamental thing people are not going and there are very many reasons for it uh, fear uh, covid and all that stuff um so we also went into a panic and said my god uh, i mean our model is not for any food or beverage it is a hangout at the end of the day people came to hang out with people and if you remove that stuff what is the need for somebody to come into cafe coffee day so we really panicked um so we also try to pivot here and there we try to do the basic you know while we had a, a system of uh, cleanliness and hygiene we we really up the quotient uh, social distancing mask from the back end processes the plants estates we put a lot of process in uh and then we started seeing people come in uh the way we did it is yet it's going to be challenging uh it's it's just not enough i mean we have to do the basics of hygiene and all that which people can see and 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 feel comfortable but that is not going to be the end it ultimately the trust they have in your brand uh they had before but now the consistency is going to be a very big issue uh you know the larger the chain we are while we had all our sops uh consistency at each outlet was a challenge but during this time we took the time to to really you know build a lot more focus on the training part because post this uh when people do come in uh, yeah th- there will be the people who will overcome you know their inhibitions but at that point maybe the market will be different 
And now why I say this is, see, like for Bangalore, right? Bangalore was one of the first to come out of the lockdown. Um, and so we have moved to a point where people have almost got accustomed to it and our sales are almost, well, not there yet, but it is uh, close to the pre-COVID levels in a lot of the outlets. But if you go to the other cities where there is still lockdown and all that place, it is primarily a function of the fear and what else is happening. I mean, like, for example, entire Maharashtra is still under lockdown. And so that will take so much more time. Now, there is not much we can do. We can, you know, there are hardly any outlets open. So there is not much we can do. We have to let the market open. Same thing with Chennai. They, they, had, they went through their, their period. So then they opened up. So there is a stuff that is going to, from the market, it's going to happen. But ultimately, while we have to do some basic hygiene, uh, beyond that, it's, I think it's clearly about our consistency, what we have to do and why they will continue to come for us. Because we do see a lot of our regular customers coming back. Uh, and so that's a very positive sign. So it's not that just we, we've been uh, optimists. We see this in Bangalore, a lot of the cafes uh, where people are, you know, there are some places where, you know, right after lockdown, uh, places started doing well. So, which, I mean, yes, uh, they do um, practice the social distancing and all that. Um, but so there are those people. But beyond that, there will be some people on the fence. There'll be a lot of new entrants, a lot of people would have gone off. Uh, so when the market starts to pick up, we have to ensure, I think, fundamentally, the, our, our promise is even more, uh, you know, the success rate is even more at, for every time we serve the customer. I think that is going to be a bigger thing for us more than any hygiene, which is a basis uh, beyond that, the consistency of what we have to do. Thanks, Ram. Two words uh, from your talk I'm picking up. Uh, one is them coming to our place. I will, I will pick that with uh, possibly Arvind next. But the second word, I'm being like slightly cheeky. You use the word Bangalore three times. I look at the panelists here, we have about four of us, five of us from Bangalore. And we opened up first. I can see Mohit uh, smiling. But I think it's a realization today that maybe Bangalore is becoming the economic capital of the country. <laughs> you may like it or not. But anyways, but, but having said that, I mean, the, the, the leader of, of one of the largest chains in India is talking Bangalore. I'm, I'm liking it. I'm from Bangalore. So anyways, going back to Arvind. Arvind, I'm just slightly, slightly digressing on, this, on the same thread, though. You guys have been serving us, people like me at the airport, pick up your spicy burger, walk around. Your children was a uh, children as a consumer was was a huge attraction for you guys. You serviced a multitude of people, youth, college guys coming in and buying your, I wouldn't say cheapest, but the most economic burger, whatever that be. I have something else to ask you. Ram said they will come in, or when they will come in. I think that's the way I heard the way he articulated that statement that they is a consumer. Today's world of digital. The reverse is only online. And if they don't come, I will serve on it. Is there an immediate tomorrow where to enhance consumer trust, will you physically move closer to the consumer? It can be your satellite centers inside uh, large apartment complexes. I don't know. You can think around it. It's your business. Do you see there is a, a reverse of what Arvind said, sorry, uh, uh, Ram said, where they, if they don't come in, I'll go to them, not just digitally. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Sridhar. Uh, in fact, uh, the way we see it is uh, not just brand trust. The way we imagined it in the past has changed. Uh, it's a moot point. Has it changed? Um, you know, uh, permanently, or is it a temporary change? But brand trust has changed. But closely fused with brand trust is convenience, right? And, and these two pillars. Uh, are closely fused to in today's day and age and brands that kind of tackle them together, right, uh, will ride out, out of the situation uh, ahead of the others. So so let me talk a little bit about uh, convenience as we see it. Uh, in, in consumer language, we see convenience as McDonald's wherever you are, right? Now, uh, delivery is us, uh, one part of McDonald's wherever you are or uh, for the matter applicable to any brand. Uh, but there are other modes of convenience, right? You're going to office, you don't want to enter the store, right? The biggest barrier today in consumer minds is I don't want to get into a crowded store, right? Despite social distancing, et cetera, et cetera, it's a risk. And it 
different target consumers see it differently for example arguably families are most cautious about entering restaurants right so how can we as brands uh, enable uh, you know the brand discovery by uh, in this context so so for us delivery is one such manifestation of uh, the brand wherever you are the other thing is take out for example uh, you could uh, pre order we are we just started the curbside pickup right you pre order the your your favorite bharaja mac uh, on the app uh, and you letting them know your car number and for example when you are reaching the store you are at the in the car you, you are served on the car right or for example drive through we got 65 or drive throughs uh, here and if you are on a long drive with family you don't want to get out of the car you just uh, pick up uh, it from a drive through window so so how how can we discover newer ways of uh, newer convenient ways uh in which uh, and of course there is delivery right which needless to say is one of the biggest channels today right so so how can brands discover those convenient ways those options for customers uh, beyond dine in uh, so that we are much more relevant in today's context right and we are furiously working to discover those uh, you know the new ways in which a restaurant can serve its consumers apart from in parallel working on brand trust you know which like other panelists also says uh, you know just a minute on uh, on uh, brand trust street the way uh, we see it uh, so there is an emotional part to brand trust and there is a functional brand to brand trust right? at least that's the way we framework it uh, the emotional part is all about brand love right uh, the functional part the dimensions have become much more complex and that's why all the brands are are uh, you know grappling with the situation you have new elements of safety social distancing uh coming in and making that whole framework of brand trust much more complex the storytelling the communication has become much more complex uh living that uh, standards in the restaurants uh, you know the heightened levels of execution operational excellence are needed so 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 yes i, I would say brand trust and convenience are are linked uh, you know irrevocably and i think brand should exploit that uh, to to kind of prosper in the new normal i will touch that thread um the last part of your thread on the brand trust later but uh before before i go into our two specialist outlet leaders like gorov and ragu i'm going to go back to the uh to the large chains mohit and ram to give me an yes no kind of an answer and this is this is what you as practitioners are going to tell the tell the world the audience who's there for this i'll i'll first ask mohit back so what arvind what i asked arvind i mean i'm going to repackage for both of you so in your immediate future strategy for business reasons and to build consumer reasons will you physically move closer to him inside a uh, micro kitchen serviced inside an apartment complex of 1000 1500 places or something like that or wherever there are certain uh, businesses which are opening would you start quickly setting up centers inside these places and even mohit on a lighter note will you set up shops when the schools open inside the schools so will your dimension of physical distance you know the way richard bag one said you know overcome space all that is left is together so will you work like that from your business strategy primarily for consumer trust mohit and uh, and ram mohit mohit you're on mute uh sorry uh the answer yeah. may not be a simple yes or no uh if the question is will you move closer to the customer my answer is yes we will move closer to the customer for the simple reason that uh, that always makes sense irrespective of the context right Uh, will i move into kitchens will i move elsewhere well that depends on a lot of other things including uh, you know uh, what the financials are what the risk return is etc etc uh in general conceptually will you move closer the answer is yes we will move closer to the customer okay ram your view um so if i move any more closer i don't know where else to go is my thing because we've all be there in everywhere uh, from uh, from high street to highways to uh, our corporate offices schools hospitals i mean we have not left anything so we are already there so from that point of view uh, you know again it, it, it the place is a is a hangout for people so we have already uh, there wherever we need to be uh, now whether some of those things we may have to rethink where will we go i think that is still we have not figured that out yet uh, right now our highways are doing very well because people are uh you know suddenly if they are fed up of working at home they all uh, weekends as you see 
uh, the drive the driveway distance resorts are packed so our highways do very well over the weekends um, our corporates are not doing well at all because offices are closed so yeah. we may have to rethink it whether that works yes we are seriously looking at what is something called a ccd at home uh, where we are going to yeah we are really come going to come to your house ccd at home and that's what we wanted to hear and and mohit uh, can can also hear that concept because i believe all these brands are today household brands i mean all what you represent so thanks for that that uh, that that feel around the possi- possibility of coming close to the consumers now let me shift the thread to the two specialist culinary uh, panelists on our or on our group uh, ragu and gorav so let me let me start with gorav first gorav a veteran with with the coffee business uh, i mean again the bangalore outlet in kormangla is what we all have seen prosper over the years ragu uh, sorry gorav uh, my question to you is specific i mean we heard uh, the three large brand chains speak about their views on on trust um, from your perspective gorav you actually acquired a customer ages back with a different proposition different approach because you were specialized now in today's world what does consumer trust mean i mean because these are not when I mean, you are not a mass brand to everybody you are you are real loyalist customers who used to come and spend maybe days or or used to speak about and 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 a lot of uh, verbal positive propaganda for brands like yours so gorav what's your take and and same after you i'll i'll come to ragu on the same yeah gorav? idea yeah can you hear me yeah yeah uh, our idea of coffee culture has always been from day one our dna was always getting into a uh, uh, live kitchen and our idea of coffee culture has always been becoming uh, that local neighborhood store so the the kind of uh, uh, you know covid scenario right now going on uh, you know when we talk to all our managers pan india across the country at all the outlets obviously over google meet so our idea is always that that you know uh, right now we're not pushing them on promotions we're only pushing them on safety because the uh, the last uh, uh, last quarter has always been you know pushing the entire team that you know how safety sanitization and the entire processes and the sops which we were following all throughout uh, has become so special and uh, and it has to become uh, totally naked to the consumer and it has to actually if, uh, for that matter not just the sop also the kitchen has to go naked to the consumer we also did uh, in fact you know uh, uh, a lot of them are doing a, a customer journey video and a safety sanitization video we also did a pr video which actually made the reporter enter most of our kitchen abruptly and you know check how the sanitization was and how the entire customer journey was so that you know at least you know uh, uh, news has become the daily uh, you know soap to most of the people now so you know counting the numbers that you know every city every state every locality you know the way it is spreading so we thought that you know news is the only way to reach out to the consumer you know gain back that customer confidence and make sure that you know uh, he gets back and he feels that confidence and eventually what we saw is that you know a lot of people started pouring in and we we are seeing that you know positive vibe over a period of time but you know what has happened is our business right now uh, is divided into three different uh, uh, class of cities like one is metro the second one is tier 2 and tier 3 now tier 3 for us has proved really well because you know we we've done Uh, almost 80% recovery in tier 3 because you know covid has been a thing which you know started from larger developed countries then it eventually came to the best of the cities then came down to the smaller cities and then to the town so you know the smaller towns are lesser affected and that's where we come from and that's where we uh, focus our uh, you know growth strategy our consumer strategy to be our, our you know focus has always been on to tier 2 and tier 3 uh, largely so that's where we've been uh, uh, actually talking to them and when we talk about all these systems and processes in tier 2 tier 3 they you know uh, for for them we we are the best so you know we basically uh, give them that that kind of an experience which they've not actually experienced with any other brand you know there there are some places the where obviously cafe coffee day and dominoes are there in tier 3 uh, but you know uh, 
when they when they look at such kind of a surety trust and all of those factors they they definitely want to give you a chance yes they are scared and you know what happens surprisingly is that you know when we push push safety so much and when we see that on a good weekend we are getting good numbers we ourselves start curbing a lot of people from walking inside the store because overcrowded is also something which we don't want because Understood. eventually it leads to the entire way that if you see a very overcrowded place what would happen is that you would you you would you know whatever the systems might be there would be couple of guys or customer uh, uh, representatives or executives asking you to do social distance but at the same time when you see so much of crowd you know you don't get that confidence at all so when you are overcrowded even that is a problem for us and whenever you know as a brand when we are undercrowded that is definitely a problem for us Understood. so we have to strike that right balance every time we have to make sure that you know we we are uh, creating that right atmosphere where you know we we are creating that positive vibe with the consumer because you know whatever system processes we've done uh, from the kitchen side from the brand side or from the customer journey side when they enter is something what they are experiencing because that's the biggest emotion when we are talking about dine in you know dine in is an emotion we we can't just you know uh, uh, have a rule book to it that this is the way you should enjoy it. or this is the way you should socialize so let me let me know. pick the yeah. the dine in experience to to ragu ragu you have a totally different value prop to the consumers so with with what gaurav is saying what what's your view on 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 your specialized approach and how customer trust is building now okay uh, first of all uh, good morning everyone uh, i run a small restaurant uh, which is uh, specialized in only dine in uh, one of the thing is after the restart after 6 months of uh, shutdown one thing what i noticed is uh, customers uh, uh, are f- having that fear to uh, get into a dining restaurant okay many of my customers would come in and uh, ask for a take away or uh, uh, some of the customers are having uh, issues with uh, how do question son how do we maintain the hygiene inside the restaurant so few things what we try to do was uh, to negate this drive uh, the fear part okay so drive out the fear part so how can we make the uh, service hall of our dining restaurant safer for anyone to come in and remove their mask and sit and uh, have their food peacefully so that is one thing what we address the second thing is we were focusing on this hccp hccp guidelines uh, tells you what are all the may, uh, hazards that you need to address in a food industry and we have we are the one of the early adapters where we had this sanitizer pods set up everywhere for the customer as well as employees even inside the kitchen uh, so the, these things uh, did help in because uh, initial days when we were asking customers to sanitize their hands they were questioning us okay is this is that a poison is it, how can we use to touch poison and have food that kind of questions were there but uh, once we reopened uh, the same customers comes back hey yes you are an early adopter of this um, uh, process where uh, things are made uh, safer for us okay and one of the thing which uh, so one breakthrough thing what we got in our restaurant is uh, we have a device which kills the virus okay which in the, within a confined space of about 1000 square feet area so this is a device okay i'm proud to say that invented by a bangalore scientist approved by us fda and uh, uh, european union class 1 certification is there and as well as japanese laboratory certification is there so this is being manufactured by uh, big companies in coming uh, few weeks like eureka for cisco many companies are getting in so there is a opt a hope and um, uh, future opt opt i'm optimistic about the future part because uh, if people can come in and remove their mask and not worry about getting infected that is the best best time you can uh, expect actually. understand so interesting sorry. interesting thought i mean again i'm hearing bangalore anyways i started off on yes. you giving it back <laughs> anyways thanks for that thanks for that uh, input both uh, gaurav and ragu now interesting i'll just pick three three four words which i heard from all of you i heard uh ram telling about highways who doing well i heard gaurav talking about 
uh, tier two, tier three bouncing back faster. And and Raghu, you're talking about maybe you're using multiple other communicate. One being your, I mean, I also am aware of this product you're talking about, the, the virus killer, which which sells uh, nanoparticles or whatever. So various ways which you guys are also doing. I mean, all all learnings for the audience. I mean, whoever I, they can align to mentally and from a values perspective, what is to follow? I mean, do I focus on a X kind of outlets, Y kind of locations, or Z kind of communications? Thanks for that. Let me now start the, the next thread, which I wanted to cover with the, with you panelists. Uh, the next thread I wanted was uh, on communication, right? I may go back to, to Mohit on that because I want to hear Mohit's view as well. So today, see, unfortunately, there are so many mediums to communicate. I'm not just calling digital physical, but there are many, many mediums today you can communicate with. Uh, even an influencer is a medium. Uh, all our social media presence is a medium. And the most dangerous medium I have come across in my life are these apartment WhatsApp groups. It's here or there. <laughs> people take decisions and uh, people are uh, self-proclaimed experts in everything, including you and me, right? So so being uh, a brand which had a very strong identity, how do you shift your communication plan to your consumers from a trust perspective? I mean, I don't want to touch too much about the hygiene on store. I think that's a given for all uh, all brands like yours. but how else do you reinforce trust on the brand? And here you can talk from a Basket Robbins perspective, uh, using various communication channels and how can the audience learn from what you're doing? I'll, I'll, uh, so I'll, I'll start with a, uh, with a simple example. Uh, you know, the, when the stores reopened, one of the, one of the things that was repeatedly coming back to us was customers, uh, being wary of touching products. Obviously, I mean, there was a fear in the customer's mind, et cetera. Also, what we picked up from our from our parlors and from our store staff, etc., was that uh, you know most of our packaging was paper packaging. If you if you recall, somewhere last year, you know there was a, a there were government mandates across various state governments, and you know uh, single use plastic was banned in many many states, including uh, in Karnataka and Andhra and so on and so forth. Uh, and at that point of time, we had moved all our packaging to let's say paper packaging, so paper tubs, paper cups. Yeah. Etc. Earlier, it used to be plastic. Uh, now there was a demand from customers saying, "I want to wash the products." You know, when I take them home. In any case, there's no in-store consumption anymore. There was consumption. You know, there was takeaway consumption, and there was delivery consumption through delivery, uh, etc. That was happening. But customers were wary. They said, "Your packaging is paper packaging, but I want to wash the product." You know, when I take it home from a certain section of customers, and uh, so learning from the customer. Uh, and keeping in mind the government mandate that single-use plastic is still banned, we moved to supplying pre-packed pre -packed tubs from our factories to our stores in all the flavors. Mm. So, you know, all the popular flavors went into pre-packed tubs and being made available at stores so that customers could still wash it if they wanted. We, we're not taking away the customer perception. Mm. Uh, it may be unsafe. Somebody may have touched it, etc. Even though there are enough number of safety protocols, uh, you know, which have been implemented, we said, okay, if the customer wants it, let's give it to him. And along with that, we also started adding a, you know, a sanitizer, uh, uh, a small piece of sanitizer, which, you know, uh, uh, customers could wipe the product if they so wanted. So those were things that we learned from the customer. We implemented it across the country. Now, uh, as I said, you know, to, to answer your larger question, so how do you communicate with the customer? The answer is that communication is not just through social mediums. Communication is also through the actions that you take. And the actions always speak louder than your words. I mean, finally, it's your actions that you're communicating about. Right? And, and for us, taking those, action, taking those visible actions at our parlors and then communicating them to our customers made a lot more sense because that has a lot more credibility attached to it. it it's not like, you know, I've implemented a, a, a face mask or a, or a face shield. Uh, it's it's it goes beyond that. So and and just as uh, uh, Raghu also mentioned that there is a virus killer in the stores. Similarly, we've implemented you know UV light solutions across our stores, where all outgoing products are UV sanitized to ensure that if at all there is any virus, it kind of gets killed. So the customer can be doubly, triply sure that the product that he's getting or consuming is absolutely fine. 
now uh, to my mind when your actions are solid communicating about them whether you communicate on social media whether you communicate through uh, mass media uh, that is fine i mean that that could be a choice of context or a city or whatever i mean you you could choose different mediums to communicate your actions largely at this point of time as a brand we been using social media because if the customer is not getting out of the house i don't need to do out of home media by and large uh, i can concentrate on you know uh, media that the customer is consuming uh, whether you believe it or not but social media has such a large following and i, I do completely agree with your point on building whatsapp groups etc uh, but fact of the matter is that the customer is spending disproportionate amount of time on social media platforms and therefore using these social media platforms to communicate the key messages that you as a brand feel very strongly about uh, that that makes you know complete sense for for some, you know for a brand like ours very interesting thought i'm happy you touched upon the non digital communication aspect because most people miss out and it's it's really uh, it's pleasing to hear what you're saying and i'm visualizing as you're talking so let me summarize mm-hmm. on your behalf please don't counter me on this i'm presuming you sure. as a leader decided to have a communication sop across your outlets that listen when a consumer comes in the person who is standing there need to give these verbal non verbal reinforcement to the consumer for example i walk in can i have half a liter of honey nut crunch sir please take from the fridge okay i am not scooping it for you it's there in the fridge please take it in a polite manner now it has subliminally reinforced my fear that the boy who is standing there is not touched my ice cream i am taking it from your fridge and my below iq in 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 biology may say okay in that fridge the virus will not survive so it's a virus free ice cream i take home that's that's what i'm i'm just visualizing okay for the sake of all of us now when i go home now i'll bring in my whatsapp idea the lady who bought that ice cream will say hey by the way baskin robbins has a contact free uh, what a pick up of a uh, honey nut crunch ice cream so it's actually a circle it started with you it was implemented by your franchisee or or, or your or last mile guy me or or another person picked up the ice cream went home but it doesn't end there because all of us want to be communication experts so i will say by the way i experienced this at baskin robbins it's good for you if it's a positive message we don't know if it was they'll say okay no no the fridge was not whatever it be right so so very valid point i mean really really happy to hear the leadership at top giving importance to the verbal non verbal communication at the last mile i would i would uh, go to ram ram what's your take on this i mean what are you guys doing for such a large uh, uh, group of people Uh, how are you communicating what do you want to communicate first and how are you communicating well uh, initially we had to uh, communicate yes of course the place was you know uh, safe enough for somebody to have uh, you know the cup of coffee with their friends so we start up with the obviously you know uh, when we first opened we had uh, posters on the door uh, communication on on the at the order uh, place that we are you know back and how many checks how how, how often we cleaning the place uh we also have a contactless menu uh where i know you have a, a, a you scan a code and you get your menu so there is no touch interface the payment is all done so that is a uh, already in a fast food uh, environment there is very less contact uh, so we remote that also of course there is a very little to be done at the, at the processing of food which which we cannot uh, overcome so uh, this contactless menu was was uh, something that really uh, gave additional uh, uh confidence for people uh beyond that we we are very uh, heavily i mean we have increased tremendously in all the social media i mean for whatever it is it's a bane of our existence but uh, for us a big uh, part of that lot of the cli- our clientele are on social media be instagram facebook uh, we have i think we now do a uh, messaging every day something new Uh, highlighting any of our new products or what we are doing for um, safety um, back end our legacy of our company our estates coffee trivia quizzes so there is there is enough and more going on there um we we have sms is sending out to you know from places where where there is we already see attraction there is high volume outlets uh, so we send sms to them because we capture the telephone numbers and we promote if there's any specials um and uh, the other part is a delivery platform we well 
dine-in is such a big part of it now. Delivery is slowly also becoming uh, a critical part for it. Not, of course, it's not going to replace dine-in, uh, but the certification that we have to receive from our delivery partners, aggregators, uh, that's an added thing that, okay, they have been certified because they come and rate us. Uh, so all this has been additional, you know, uh, ways to communicate to people uh, who are, you know, of course, somebody, once they come in, who are regulars, we don't have to convince them, but we're trying to reach to everybody who might be very apprehensive. So these have been some of the ways we've been trying to communicate all that we are doing uh, at the outlet through social media, through calls, uh, you know, cold calls we have done. Uh, initially, right after lockdown, uh, we used to call people and say, hey, you have visited us. Uh, we have this, why don't you come? And, and you know, we thought initially what could happen, I mean, people will be really upset that, you know, we're just calling them. It's another telemarketer. But uh, surprisingly, a lot of people, you know, it was a response for it. And so we could get some additional sales per outlet. So uh, some some amount of cold calls, telecalls, that did help us. You both panelists have almost read my mind, I guess, because I wanted, what I wanted to hear from you is communication, which has nothing to do with health and, and the current situation. And you said exactly that you're talking to them about offers, I mean, your engagement stuff. Uh, and I'll tell you why I wanted to hear this from you. And I'm going to just ask you again, uh, uh, Ram, I wanted to hear your view again. How important is communication about positivity and stability of the brand during this time? But listen, I'm launching new products. These offers are there. The, the typical, usual uh, December reach out, which you reached out to me as a consumer. Uh, are you all going back to that kind of a communication as well? And I'll, I'll, I'll touch upon the others again before I go to Gaurav and Raghu. I wanted to hear again from Mohit and uh, Arvind. Are you doing product launches? You know, those kind of positive vibe messages, which I want to hear. I don't want to hear every day that I've got a sanitizer on my office or, or sanitizer in my outlet. So the usual positive marketeers mind messages, which I used to get initially, it was annoying. But today it is far more reinforcing for me that business is back to normal. Uh, I'll start with Ram. Ram, do you, do you think that is the way uh, you guys are doing and is that the immediate short-term way forward? Uh, absolutely. I don't think it's a short-term forward. I think, see, people have got used to it. They they see it uh, and, I'm you know, our heightened uh, safety level has, uh, is, is gone across everybody. Everybody's secure safety uh, hygiene levels have increased. So it's always for the better. So I don't think at least the bigger brands like us, all of us here cannot afford to have anything substandard so that is going to be the basic minimum beyond that how do they want to keep coming i have to do a lot more on product innovations of course in the last six months we have launched so many products uh health range i mean these are all some things we were still tinkering on whether we should have it uh, we have done so many new things health um uh, you know everybody was in this uh, uh turmeric milk yeah everybody joined the band and we also did uh, but that was not that that was going to be my, you know, that was going to be the trick that is uh, to say that we are also on, on that. We are not going to be left behind. There are some things very innovative we did. So it has to be something about uh, something new that we have to keep uh, pushing for. I, I think the health and all is, 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 yeah, those are basics. That is not going to, I, we firmly believe that is not going to bring us any additional uh, volume of the lost business. Uh, very we very well said. We have to be on the cutting edge of whatever it is. Yes, uh, um, there are some new avenues we are pursuing. I don't think dining is going to save us. Uh, like everybody's thinking, dining is going to save. Uh, dining is a completely different set of things. I mean, um, you know, it, we are not a uh, CCD doesn't come to your mind when you're hungry or thirsty. I mean, that is the absolute fact of the matter. So you're not going to order something. Okay, maybe you know, we might order a cappuccino or whatever, but it is not delivery robust. By the time you get that coffee, it has turned into something else. So we know our in, uh, challenges. The, the point is, how do, we, uh, how do we be really cr creative, innovative, and consistent? You have to be consistent. Otherwise, now people will... will I don't think they will they will have the tolerance level because there's going to be somebody else who's going to do it better. Thank you, Arvind. I come to you. Uh, uh, Ram said, and I also mentioned about the need for positive, stronger communication. I, I I leave it to you to give your view, but please don't tell me you guys are starting some mock meat burger 
I'm a non-vegetarian and and mock meat is something is a no no. So please uh, please Arvind your views on on what are you guys doing from a real strong positive marketing communication perspective at this time. Uh, so that's a good one, uh, Shridhar. So uh, you know, while brand trust, convenience are important, everyone agrees, and there are some real work being done uh, in those areas. Uh, I think from a customer perspective, customers looking for uh, those bits and pieces of normalcy, right? Uh, and and to feel good in all of this uh, current stresses and anxieties, those moments of feel good, which remind him or her uh, about how it was pre-COVID. Right. And and in that sense, brands play a very very important role in that in the customers and uh, eagerness to feel uh, normal, so to say. Right. So the favorite burgers, the favorite pizzas, right. The favorite coffees. Uh, how can they access and feel and feel uh, you know normal? So so I, I think that's very very important. Uh, so so what so in that context, you know. We just launched a campaign about a week back where we are saying some things, many things have changed, right? And we all know many things have changed, but some things haven't changed. And that something that haven't changed is, you know, your love for the brand, right? So, so, so that I think is very, very important. And little bubbles of happy is what we call, uh, and we are communicating that actively to customers. Uh, and and uh, on the other part, you know, we had a lot of new product plans uh, that we were on the anvil. Uh, you know, while there was a discussion whether to pause or go ahead, we decided to go ahead, right, with those new product launches uh, across all the markets. And customers have received them very well. Uh, so so in that sense, I think there is a great deal going for companies and brands doing their regular business focus areas uh, as well as. Uh, doing a lot of stuff to adjust to the new business realities. Uh, I will just go back to Mohit. Mohit, your views on this positivity, new flavors? Is something coming up? Is that what you're focusing? And then I'll I'll take the next slide. Hundred percent, Sridhar. The uh, you know at at our core, we believe that we are a brand which is all about enjoyment, happiness, sharing, celebrations, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, like Ram mentioned, they are a brand about you know hanging about, uh, and that that's absolutely fine as far as uh, CCD is concerned. But from our perspective, we are an enjoyment brand. We can't become a hospital brand. We can't become a taking care of you brand, you know. And and we realize that. And which is why we are, uh, in terms of our communication, yes, there is communication about all the safety measures that we have taken, but it does not override the overall crux of the brand. So if I was to give you a number, maybe 10 to 15% of our communication is around safety and hygiene. Maybe in you know May and June, it was possibly a little higher. At this point, it is about maybe 15%. And 80-85% of our communication is about the core brand messaging, which is about new products, which is about exciting offers, which is about reasons to come and you know uh, A, sample the brand and have more moments of happiness that you can then share with your friends and family. That's at level one. At level two, as a brand, we have again consciously stayed away from doing a haldi ice cream. Uh, there are brands that have done that. Uh, we have consciously stayed away because we are not an immunity building brand. If you wanted to build your immunity, you will build it at home with you know whatever other uh, concoctions that you can, you can make at home or, or the other products that you can buy. But when you consume my brand, you're consuming my brand because you want to celebrate something. You want you know it's a small occasion. It could be anything. Uh, or you just want to have a good product or, or a good experience at home. That's about it. Uh, so we very consciously want to play in that space. And therefore, everything that we do will be around that. It will not be to build your immunity for sure. It's, you know, I, I feel only about it as you feel about, you know, uh, mock meats going into burgers. <laughs> Thanks for that. And before I get into my last thread about new consumers, and since you said, give it back to me on the mock me, I'll just make one statement, which just came to my mind it has nothing to do with that topic. Yeah. Off late, I'm hearing a lot about this jackfruit. There is jackfruit ice cream. I don't know whether you have it. I, there don't. is jackfruit mock meat. There is jackfruit coffee tea. So pretty much all of you in this panel, I mean, eventually we'll have to use that fruit, which is the most ugly looking thing on earth. Okay. Maybe it's the most tastiest thing, but by looks, it doesn't look like a fruit. So anyways, that's a short digression on that. And I'll go to Raghu and Gaurav and then to all of you back on my third thread. We spoke about consumer trust. And as leaders of, of this business, you spoke about the importance of communication at this point in time. 
overloading of health messages was required at a point in time. Now we are coming back to give positivity. Uh, we spoke about you know various kinds of things which are working for you. What is what is that you're giving priority? What kind of messages you're giving to the last mile? And my last thread for our conversation, we have another ten minutes to go. But who is our new consumer? We all had CRM systems. We all had marketing return data coming back to us saying this is the profile of my customer. This is the influencer. That's in so in each of your cases, who in the family or who in the office group is the decision maker? We all have come that way, right? I mean, we all have learned that. But with the new normal, the way things are going, where the channel of uh, ordering, channel of communication, channel of exploring, channel of brand identity, which communication is all going all over the place, right? It's not changing 100%, but it's all over the place. So let me understand from the starting point of my, my question to all of you is customers have different risk appetite. Your most loyal customer may not be the risk-taking guy, right? So today, unfortunately, things start from the risk appetite of the consumer. And, and as, as, I, as I look back, the risk appetite is also a factor of your current life and environment. So bachelors may have to go out and eat, right? And they can't say, okay, I'm risky. I'll eat only uh, home-cooked uh, noodles for 20 days. That's not the way life is. So with this lockdown situation, I mean, I won't talk positive. I don't want to talk negative here. Has it opened up a new set of consumers? First question. And second question, how are you getting them? New set of consumers, how are you getting them? I'll first go to Raghu. Raghu, you have a specialized restaurant. Are you getting a new set of consumers? Yes, no. And if you're getting, how are you getting them? Uh, yes, uh, we did, uh, as you said, uh, profiling of our customers and uh, what is the age group that were uh, coming to our customers. So one interesting thing about this is uh, we play in the health food, uh, this one, since the beginning. Uh, I've been in this industry for four years and I ran two organic restaurants. So at the time, what we noticed was the people who are very concerned about their health and the rest of our people above 35. 35 to the age group of say 70 that was my customer set and the people who were below 35 were yes not so concerned about this one but they were more concerned about the presentation taste and other other kind of uh, things so this new pandemic has uh, definitely i can i cannot uh, say that okay nothing it has not affected me at all yes i have lost a certain set of customers who are above 55 so they're not uh, coming up to the, they're not willing to come to the restaurant and uh, do a dining. Uh, they are getting converted into takeaways, that kind of stuff. Okay, some people may not, I'm, we might have lost them permanently. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the new set of customers, the young crowd, yes, they are having, uh, they are exploring the ways to go and try out the new things. And since this, uh, virus opened up the concept of immunity health and other stuff yes i'm getting a new set of customers who are young okay and they talk about all this uh, hygiene uh, uh, food as a medicine concept and all these things and they are uh, willing to talk to us which was not happening earlier so in in essence i yes i have lost some customers i gained some new customers also I think a very valid point. I mean, I heard um, one of the other panelists, I think, uh, either, I think, I think uh, Ram was talking about turmeric mill, but I came to you for this, this question first to hear this, I mean, to see whether there is a conscious mindset change to, to a health food concept for the youth, because uh, disposable income and habit of spending on dine-in has been the highest among the youth. I mean, I don't know what age group, but generally the people who are I mean, they look like Bangaloreans. Okay. Anyways, so uh, so it's, it's a very interesting point you're telling. And I want to, you're starting this conversation. I want to hear the rest of the panelists also to respond to this thread which you brought in for new customers trying to explore things which are good for health. But having said that, I'll, I'll park this point before I go to Gaurav because Gaurav touched upon, he mentioned he's, he's getting a lot of positive traction from the uh, tier two, tier three towns uh, from the coffee culture brand. Gaurav, what are you hearing, seeing? A new set of consumers are they coming in and how are you getting them got obviously for the obvious reasons that you know school and colleges have been affected uh, largely and you know our uh, 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 you know evening till morning till evening crowd was always uh, tuition classes schools colleges people bunking around and you know larger gangs you know, uh, uh, getting around the cafes across various locations. So, you know, those kind of people uh, definitely now are uh, inside the home. 
they they are majorly socializing uh, well, i i tell my people that you know uh, eventually like uh, uh, you know zoom and house party has now become uh, the apps like this have become our competition because now people are socializing more through zoom and more through uh, apps like house party so you know eventually you know that's the way people have been doing but yes there's a new set of customers which are coming in there are people coming in micro uh, uh, groups there there are people coming in couples uh, uh, triples and you know people who are coming in six and eights and tens have actually reduced so that's basically uh, the kind of micro uh, customer or micro uh, socializing which is actually growing which we we see uh, 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 and uh, secondly to that how we are trying to address is that we we are actually getting combos which are single serve and you know combos for two because which would attract a lot of people as in uh, as of now a lot of people are actually looking at that i would not want to share my meal with three of the other friends i'm coming with so you know those single serve meals is the way ahead that's that's how we are looking at things right now and yes you know uh, to sum it up it's definitely uh, you know a smaller uh, a number of people like couples triples or more than uh, fives or six or eights which were earlier interesting before i move to uh, arvind ram and mohit i want to go back to ragu ragu are you seeing a large group orders because you cater to a very specific need which you may use health as a positive uh, a vibe on your product is it is it say corporates i mean wherever things have opened up are they ordering more from you because you claim your healthier and your more immunity building whatever your positioning is do you see a lot of large orders and large kind of customers uh no the dif- difference is yes uh, as I, i agree i concur with my earlier panelist we are seeing uh, more of uh, small orders small orders uh, more yeah. number of small orders than yes and uh, uh, gatherings of uh, see we used to see something like uh, 20 people 30 people coming in and uh, having a good time in the restaurant and so that is reduced Uh, but we do see families coming in so that is a interesting thing that uh, families do trust us still that's good thanks for that so i move on to arvind arvind you have serviced a variety of consumers at variety of places i mean i said about earlier about airports and whatever it be right so do you see a change i mean let the old consumers be there i mean you will they'll get back their brand loyal consumers but are you getting any new threads from your insight of of consumers who may may not have thought okay this is not a profile i expected any new positivity of of set of consumers coming your way yes uh, i think there are two or three diff- different uh, and distinct uh, threads uh, that we have been seeing uh, through the last 4 5 months of lockdown uh, so definitely i think there is a lot going for uh, you know saying that the youngsters uh, the students and the young professionals uh, uh, definitely coming to do take out and uh, cities where dining is open thronging the dining as opposed to families who are by and large uh, you know uh, waiting to uh, order uh, through food delivery at home right in the safety of their home so that is one distinct trend uh, that one sees uh, so so some customers are definitely much more cautious versus some other customers the other one is the order size right uh, i think early part of the pandemic we saw something like 40 to 50% growth in average uh, check as we call it uh, that has stabilized around 30 to 40% now uh so so definitely group consumption has been on the rise uh, as we all know during the last 4 months of lockdown um, and some states are still under lockdown home cooking was the predominant uh, you know solution for customers and at some point in time i think people needed a break so they order in for the family uh, or for a group of friends living together so the o- average order size definitely shot up and we leveraged the trend by promoting family meals group meals combos uh and that paid a lot i would say volumes were down but the average check was uh, very very high uh and also uh, customers innovative uh, approach to channel our channels as we call it right for us uh, drive through take out delivery dine in these are all channels and uh, and the way customers took to take out the way customers to took to for example our on the go which is our curbside uh, food delivery was fantastic because customers were you know uh as anxious to access that loved brands in different ways right but still that the accessing is very very important for them uh, so that they feel normal so I, i think customers and brands are 
tangoing a lot to discover new ways to reach out to each other i would say interesting over to you ram um, a wider spread a wider reason to come initially it was coffee then hang out and then lot of fnb at your place so what are you seeing any new sets of customers or any new clusters uh, at coffee day and that can be a learning for others uh, so for us uh, actually this became a a, a a big topic for us even before uh, covid i mean with all the stuff that we were handling and uh, we had reached a point of stagnation and so we had to go back and see whether our target audience is what it is i mean we we and then we did a, a lot of in depth research uh, so we were initially target i mean our or always a thought was that we were targeting a, a very young audience of 18 to 34 uh, and is that sustainable because um, and so we had already reached a point of or or we had we had started making some inroads into how do we uh, broaden that group uh there there's some amounts of uh, elements of health do we need to really pivot to that what is the does it work for us does it uh, uh involve having a lot of healthy products in there uh so some of the things and of course the covid just exacerbated some of the things um but everybody was doing it we did a few things healthy but i don't think we are going to pivot and we are not going to make it but one thing was yes a lot of our products because they are indulgent by nature they are not the most health friendly and so going forward we will we will start tweaking them to have some elements of health or at least reduce uh, some of the you know uh, make it still indulgent but at least you uh, use of better ingredients or so called more health friendly ingredients um the covid as such or post that we have not seen too much of thing yes we are backing on our regulars to come uh but because of the, the nature of you know all that is starting around us there are a lot of uh, specialist players and why they are popular so we have also taken up on that we have to our, our coffees are as our big strength so we need to become even more uh, focus more on coffee so that we get back some of those people who could have moved away from us and go to some of the specialist people uh so that's been our focus uh how do we get them them back uh and, and so again back to consistency S- little bit of health uh how do we get back a, a, a more uh, not necessarily very young but beyond 35 how do we keep them how do we retain them um uh how do we change the vibe of it because we've always believed in a very youth look so when we go to our outlets that's the music that's the you know the very close uh, place tables of course now with uh, with social distancing all that is going to go out so we'll have to uh, see how, i mean these are all work in progress how do we uh, get a larger segment of the uh, office goers who might have who, who might have we might have to uh, you know or we're going to lose either through our presence or not there in the corporates how do we get them to our outlets uh, so these are some of the things we're working on interesting and i actually you gave me ammunition to corner mohit but about you also talking about health and on the other side ice cream is celebration but uh, instead i would actually want mohit to speak on something related but at a level higher mohit you've got i mean let's forget covid let's forget baskin robbins i'm asking you as a veteran in the industry of consumer you've seen consumers across your career uh if you want to give a message to the other panelists to myself and the rest of the audience as a veteran in the industry what are the two or three new consumer types coming up which people should keep an eye on okay you can take any example but what is coming up and i'm not saying necessarily because of the lockdown because that the other panelists have touched upon but are you seeing any any interesting trends in india or abroad where there are newer set of consumers who are coming up and we all should keep in mind because building trust with them could be a different game altogether i mean i'm just 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 giving you a plain slate if you have any thoughts on that moment so uh so i i'm going to pick up where you know ram left actually uh he he spoke about the you know the the customer who's let's say relatively health conscious and the the brand currently doesn't have products which are the most health friendly i mean that's the way he articulated it and and that's also true for baskin robbins to a very very large extent because you know, it's a category it's a category descriptor uh and that is one of the key things i mean not just in the ice cream category but across category in general there is an emergence of a customer who is a lot more health conscious 
who's a lot more fitness focused wellness conscious etc he's very conscious of what he puts into his body it runs across categories so if i was to talk of the bakery and the patisserie industry their sizes are becoming smaller why because the customer doesn't want to eat so much he feels guilty after having consumed so much and so on and so forth is there a ramification across the potato chips industry yes there is they are getting into baked and they are getting into whatever else uh, kinds you know which are less harmful for the customer it's happening across categories right from atta and rice to uh, you know to ready to eat products to ice creams to patisserie you name it it's happening uh, is that a trend that we as let's say restauranteurs or we as cafe owners can stay away from the answer is no you can you cannot because there is a customer increasingly i mean today this the tribe of this customer may be increasing at 25% year on year with a very small base but fact of the matter is that it's increasing far more rapidly as compared to your regular database your regular database of customers and as brands we could lose out on their affiliation if we do not innovate either fast enough or if we do not have brands that are able to cater to their needs uh so that's the big message that i have uh as a company what have we done uh so uh, uh as a company we have launched another brand we didn't want to tinker with baskin robbins the brand because baskin robbins stands for a certain thing to a certain audience and just having one product which is healthy wouldn't mean anything to either our franchisee partners or anything to the customer because bulk of the range would still remain what it is and you know uh, ra- rather than losing out on that customer we said you know a better way is to have a brand which is focused entirely on consumers who are health focused so whether they whether they want low sugar products whether they want vegan products whether they want keto friendly products whatever whatever is the trend that is you know in the market at this point of time and consumers are gravitating towards we need to have a brand that is focused on that and if it's large enough to obviously merit having greater and so forth Uh, having done our research we've introduced another brand uh, about 6 months ago unfortunately you know our timing was we timed it perfectly with the onset of uh, <laughs> uh but uh, the brands out there in the market it's there across stores in fact in some of the ccd stores as well so uh so that's how it's going but uh so as as a as a evolving category uh, it's not something that we can close our eyes to as consumers who are health focused and it's you know it doesn't mean that there are different consumers today shridhar wants to eat an ice cream and tomorrow he'll say you know uh, i need to be very conscious of my health for the next 3 months and i therefore need to consume products which are only good for me so it's the same consumer at many points of time of course there is uh, also a set of consumers who are you know a lot more focused but uh, as as brands we need to evolve our benefits we we need to be in touch with the consumer and and you know what uh, really our brands mean to the customer that that's what i would say Int- interesting thought mohit because i was visualizing again so positive oh. health as a trust building communication so when i mean yes. positive health it is actually what you consume maybe from an example of ram it could be which bean is coming into your coffee for you it could be what is the new flavor where is the flavor coming from to each of us to make the to the others right so the positive health as a concept could be a strong uh, communication plan as well as an innovation plan because unfortunately there is a health mind because of the lockdown and 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 is that what would you agree with that uh no i wouldn't uh, i i wouldn't because uh, you know when you say source of bean uh, bean comes from a particular place etc that's not so much health to me That, that's yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, that, that's more credibility of the coffee story and you know uh, the origin story and so on and so forth. That's not really health, uh, as I would see it, or a particular flavor from Baskin Robbins. That's not really health. Uh, health would be if you had a credible story to tell consistently. Understood. Understood. Health. Understood. Very well and said. May, and that may or may not be possible under the ambit of the same brand. It may be possible. it may not be possible i mean depending on the brand and the industry uh, to which the brand belongs interesting interesting thanks for that gentlemen i mean i think we spoke for barely over 1 hour and and lot of learnings for me i mean i'm sure all of you enjoyed speaking and hearing with with each other we touched upon communication we touched upon new kinds of consumers we touched upon what is it today that is working for you guys we touched upon the new consumer and so on and so forth so 
thanks for your time and then thanks organizers for calling all of us i mean i i enjoyed it it's been a pleasure speaking to all of you Absolutely. mini over to you likewise thank absolutely you. pleasure pleasure